Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. I recently realised that I hadn't actually played Cradle Control at any point on my channel despite it being a significant part of the metagame and a real deck that people should have on their radar so I thought it was about time I addressed that and here we are playing Cradle Control. Now the name Cradle Control is slightly a bit of a misnomer. We're not really a control deck, we're sort of a more of a mid-range beatdown deck with a potential combo finish off of Natural Order into Crater Hoof sometimes or Natural Order into a track that can win games too. So what we are is a toolbox deck. So we're Elvish Reclaimer to get our toolbox of lands. Often going to be Cradle. We can go and get Lair of the Hydra and Paduka Bog and our Dried Arbors too. Then we have Fiend Artisan, which can go and get any of our creatures, whether that's like a Quiron Ranger or some Bowmasters. More Fiend Artisans have beaten down or going and get a Grist or a Collector Roof, you know, pretty powerful stuff. We also have the Green Sun Zenith as a tutor box and the Natural Order as a tutor box. So lots of tutoring available to us. The idea is to have the right tool for the job at all times. We package this all up with a bunch of mana dorks. So this build has got six mana dorks and Quiron Ranger, which is kind of like a mana dork in some situations. This particular build was the top eight list from the European Eternal Weekend. And it has a few interesting things in terms of having the Chrome Mox and the Elvish Spirit Guide in the main deck. You don't normally see that, but I figured we'd try this because, you know, the top eight had like pretty much the biggest legacy tournament of the year so worth having a look at like this is pretty much it grist is mainly our like removal we can use this and also just keep generating tokens and just get all the value with fiendizan so yeah that's basically the main deck really it doesn't look that complicated but there's so many different lines you can take that it quickly becomes complicated sideboard wise we got removal from we need removal hand disruption from we need hand disruption another nice silver bullet creature to find it's really good against storm decks like beseech decks a couple of pith and needles a couple of Force of Vigors for Artifact decks to supplement our Collector Roof. And two Mindbreak Traps for Storm decks that go underneath us quite easily. And that's basically it for the deck. Now, I've not really played this deck before, so bear with me. But I'm going to give it my best shot. I've certainly played against it enough and watched people playing it. So hopefully we can do a serviceable job with it. Alright, with that said, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And let's get into it with some Cradle Control. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? We are on the play. We don't really want this crate Hoof in our opener. I don't have enough reps for this deck to know what we're supposed to be doing. This is something we can work towards with our Cradle. I think we will keep this because we have the Green Sun Zenith which can do a lot of work for us. So we can start off with just a basic forest here. I think we jam a Hierarch that gives us better options next turn so we can go and get like a Collector Roof next turn if we're on that sort of matchup. Mystic Rainforest from our opponent. Volcanic Island. Dragon's Rage, Chandler. All right, so we're in some sort of Delver matchup here. A okay, Chrome Mox. Pitching the Crater today isn't the worst. So what do we want to do here? We could just go and get a Fiend Artisan and start doing Fiend Artisan things. I think we play out the Allosaurus Shepherd. And then we can green suns uncountably for a fiend artisan. Or we could try and get a grist going. A grist seems pretty good here. It will cost us our behemoth, which is like our go over the top button. I think grist is just better though. Grist is just such a powerful card. If they spend a counter spell on this mox because they can't use their counter spell anywhere else, then we still just get to make a fiend artisan now. All right. Okay, they're playing portents. They're probably playing the build that won the European Eternal Weekend. So now we cast this for X is 2. We go get ourselves a Fiend Artisan. We're not a million miles away from just casting our Crater Hoof Behemoth. So we've got 3 mana here for 5, 6. Alright, so they're going to bolt our Fiend Artisan. Sure. Makes sense. And they milled over a Wasteland. That's interesting. Alright, they've got another Wasteland. So they're going to take out our Cradle here. Yep, we're going to need a little bit of help from the situation we're in right now. Right, they're not attacking with their channeler. Natural order, you say. We are one mana away from being able to do that. Uncounterably, I may add. Uh, we can attack with this, and it's a two-power guy. What have they got? Instant, artifact, land. Sure, I think we attack with this. It'll get exalted, so it'll be a 2-2. Two -two. So if we find a land next turn, we get to put an Attraxor on the stack. This will be pretty good, and should be able to beat most of what our opponent's doing, unless they have their one of stern dismissal to bounce it. But we'll still draw a bunch of cards from it, so it'll still be great. Yep, so they get one damage in here. And then Holy Heat targeting our 
Noble Hierarch. Let's float some green mana. Make them worry about an endurance. So we're going to fetch a Dried Arbor at end step. Because this means that if we draw a Cradle, we can put the Unaccountable Natural Order on the stack. Something I'm very interested in doing. Look at this. One, two, three, four. Natural Order, Sacrifice, and Dried Arbor. It's going to get Traxxer. And we have a bunch of stuff here. So this is our Planeswalker. And then our creature. We probably want... So we get the Green Suns here. Probably want the Fiend Artisan here. It's going to be quite large. And do we want another Dried Arbor? Or do we want a Misty Rainforest? I think it's probably Dried Arbor. All right, our opponents uh, had enough there. They clearly don't have the bounce spell in hand. Otherwise, that would be lights out. Okay. That worked out all right for us. Now we have to do it again. So... We can play Pith Needle for Wasteland if we want to. We can play some removal spells in the form of Snuff Out. And then we can play things like Gadok Teague to shut down the Force of Will type effects. But I don't think that's where I want to be. So we're looking at maybe these six cards. Collector Roof is obviously one that can go. Um, Endurance is very good in this matchup, so we don't want to trim that. The natural order plan is actually not as good as it looks here because we we invest quite a decent amount of resources. So I think we trim on this. And are we trimming the crater hoof or the tracks here? Like we can green sun's for both of them. Um, maybe we're supposed to be trimming like some once upon a times. Oh, these things are fine. These things are fine. These things are great. So we're boarding in a bunch of non-creatures. I think once upon a time does get worse. Do we, we don't really want to draw two Pithing Needles. Drawing one is good, drawing two is bad. So maybe we just have the one in there for Wastelands. Then we can use the Snuff Outs to kill some scary stuff. Um, Genova Hierarch into Bowmasters is pretty reasonable in this sort of matchup. I think we'll give that a go. Our only black source is from the Hierarch, but we do have two of them. Like if we can pick off a creature with a Bowmasters, on the way in, that's going to be exceptional for us. And our opponent showed us the poor tent, which does make me think they're playing the the winning list, which means I have a pretty solid idea because I played it the other day, so I know what they do and do not have access to. That feels like maybe a little bit of a reach, considering we've only, the only reason we're doing we're basing that off of the poor tent. But that is quite an unusual card, so I'm okay to make that call until I know otherwise. So I'm not expecting other colours from our opponents apart from the tiny green splash for sometimes. Cast on the other side of the Druid. Alright, there's a Volcanic Island from our opponent and a Delver. A snuff out that we can't actually put into play right now. Let's play this Ignoble Hierarch and hope that Delver doesn't flip. So we get a chance to snipe it down with the Bowmasters. No such luck. A Brainstorm, sure. So they have a Fetch Land for Brainstorm as well. But they're just cracking it right now. A Counterbalance. Okay, that's a pretty good one. So we know some of the things they have available to them right now. So this can go and get us the Bayou, which allows us to cast our Bowmasters. All right, let's try and hit the Insect Elaboration here. We kind of want to cast all of our spells now so we can get around this Brainstorm fixed on top of their deck for Counterbalance triggers. They did not use their Counterbalance ability there. So we have an option here of just playing out the Bowmasters now while we're shields down, which I think is the correct play. This can definitely punish us if the top card of their library... Okay, the top card of our li their library is a Wasteland. Right, so we'll ping them for one. And then we'll play out this Pith Needle on Wasteland, knowing that it'll resolve because the top card of their library is a Wasteland. Okay, so now we are on board and we're ahead, but our opponent does have a counterbalance which can make things difficult in the future. But we can try and navigate the mana cost in their deck using things like Green Sun Zenith and Overpaying or whatever. I don't believe they have... Four mana costs. I'm trying to think what threes they have. I don't think they're running Borrower. I think they're on the Sternest Missile build. Which means that they might not have any three drops either. So that might be the sweet spot. Our Lair of the Hydra will be coming in tapped. And we eventually get around to playing it. Because we want to play our other lands. But I think it was important to get our Swamp on. And just take their pressure out. And put ourselves ahead on board. Now if they've got like End the Festivities type cards. To like kill our little guys. That's going to be a miserable time for us. But we turn this brainstorm off, so the cost of the cost of doing business with this brainstorm is enormous. So I think we're in an all right spot. So there's the wasteland we knew about from the top. Right, our opponent's casting a portent, targeting themselves. 
So they're basically just doing a slow trip ponder. This will give us a ping in our turn with the Bowmasters. Send a point of damage upstairs. Grows our Orc army. Engage attacks here. This will be three because of the Exalted. So we can try and slam this Daze. They don't really have many three drops and they haven't been countering other stuff we've been doing. If we want to play around counter magic, we need to play the Cradle out. So we can play around a soft counter like a Daze. Let's try this Grist out. I don't think there's any three drops in their deck. They know what's on top of their library due to the portent. Right, so they have a counter spell and they're pitching the Brainstorm. I'm not playing out this Ignoble Hierarch just yet because we don't want to have all of our stuff wiped because we want to have something to turn our Cradle on and potentially help us cast a Natural Order later on. Right, so they've got a 3-3 Dragon's Race Channeler. Now we're incentivized to play the Hierarch out so that we can be bigger on combat. I have a Delver on top. Would I like to trade my Orc army for the Dragon's Race Channeler? I think that's acceptable. They're just taking damage. Not unexpected. So we could jam a Spirit Guide here. But again, I don't think it's worth doing it. The extra mana they're pumping it into our lair might end up being better than playing it as a creature. Lightning Bolt, where is this going? Upstairs. That's kind of terrifying. Okay, they put Delver into their graveyard. This is making me think that we're going to find some sort of Merc Tide all up in our grills soon. Yeah, so this is the Merc Tide. How big is it? 6-6. Six, six. Not tiny, that's for sure. This will kill us on the next swing. We don't have the blue mana to cast our Atraxa. So, this taps for... Th we can't tap for enough to force the block with the Merc Tide, I don't believe. So, 1 mana. So, 3 mana. 4 mana. 5 mana. So we can make a 5-5, five five. then it becomes a 6-6 six six on attacks. We can make it a 7-7 seven seven with the average Spirit Guide, but our opponent will just kill us. This doesn't have reach, does it? Um, no. So our opponent will just kill us with this Merc Tide. Alright. Um, I'm happy with how we sideboarded here. I think we just go in again. That uh, Ignoble Hierarch, if it wasn't countered, would have given us 2 more damage. So it would have given us the ability to push for 9 that turn. As well as making our attack of the turn before do one more damage that so would have been lethal if they hadn't accounted that. So that's kind of interesting. Alright, our opener here seems fine. We can reclaim her and then work towards an endurance, which will stop Merktites coming into play. We have a little bit of removal as well. We're just going to keep this and start on the reclaimer. We can turn reclaimer into a 3 4 as early as turn 2, fetch land, fetch land, and then using our second turn to activate the reclaimer. So that's something I'm interested in if our opponent is not killing our Reclaimer and is not leaving mana open to kill it in response. Although they can't really kill it in response actually once we have it because we can just activate it and it's the cost that puts it into the graveyard. So we can't get caught out that way. Here we start on Basic Forest. Alright, we begin. Let's go and get ourselves a Basic Forest. Play our Reclaimer. And pass. See if they bolt this or not. It's a pretty tempting target to bolt. Right, Delver of Secrets. Crack this. Hmm. I was going to want a Bayou for the snuff out here. So we get the Bayou, and then we try and snuff... Are we snuffing this one out? I think we are snuffing this one out. And then we can hold this activation up. Because it's instant speed, and it puts the card in the graveyard, they can't bolt in response. And maybe our opponent will make a mistake and try and bolt our creature, and then we can make it larger. There's a Wasteland. I didn't really want to fire that one off, did I? I'm going to sacrifice this Bayou, just insulate against the Wasteland a little bit for next turn. Let's go and get ourselves... Do we get fetch land here, or do we just go and get the basic forest? I'm down with the basic forest here. Right, they're brainstorming now, but we can't cast an Orcish Bowmasters. And Verdant Catacombs. So, I think this turn we jab with our Reclaimer here. Then we deploy the Verdant Catacombs. And we hold up an Endurance. I don't really want to cast this Endurance into what they've got, though. We shouldn't be expecting a Merktide this turn. Another Wasteland. All right. A Grafdigger's Cage. This will stop some of our bits and pieces. So this will stop our Greets on Zeniths and our Natural Orders. We have brought in our one Natural Order. I don't think we want to fire in the Endurance into a Daze. I think we can wait a turn. We get attacks here. We can just be the Delver we want to see in the world, I guess. 
Just play a 3-4 and just keep beating. So now we can play the Cradle, and this allows us to play the Endurance when we want to. A round of days. Stern Dismissal on our little friend. So we have one, two, three, four. So they will need to put something else in the graveyard in order to make a Merc Tide this turn. All right, so not making a Merc Tide this turn. If we try and fire in the Endurance now, it can go into Dazes, so I think we don't need to do that. But now we can very much do that. Now we also could have sacrificed this to the Reclaimer. I prefer wiping our opponent's graveyard here and just putting the pressure on. It's going to tax. Just the power of three fours compels me here. Do I think our opponent has a daze? I don't really want to expose. No, I think it's worth doing this. I'll go for a bayou here to deploy a creature. If they want to daze this, it sets them back in terms of their own mana development. And now we have lethal damage on board. Now they have a wasteland which answers one of our points of damage. But we are quite far ahead just playing the make some guys plan. Portent. You sure? That is not really going to stop them from losing the game. They're going to go to one. So fetch lands are going to be off. Alright, so they've got a land here. If they crack this and they don't have removal spells for another one of our guys, then they're going to lose. All right, we got the game there. My first game of Cradle Control, and we succeeded. All right, not too shabby. I think we had some nice lines there. Let's go to round two. All right, our opening hand has a couple of tutors and some mana docks to ramp stuff out. This seems fine to me. Like, if this sort of hand isn't that good, then, you know, it's probably a matchup that's not going to be that good for us anyway. Like, this gives us the option to at least have turn two collector roof against matchups where we care about that. And our opponent can't thought seize us off of that either. If we're against fairer matchups, we're going to have a better time, but combo matchups aren't really our bread and butter with this thing. So I think we play out the Ignoble Hierarch, make them think a bit more. Maybe we're goblins, we like food chain goblins. Street Wraith. Okay, so we're probably looking at some sort of Death Shadow style list, would be my assumption here. Gris the Hunger Tide. That is a very strong card to play. But do I want to play it into a daze here? I don't think I do. I think we play out the Windswept Heath, play out a Noble Hierarch, and I really want to just tutor for... So we could try and force a Daze out by tutoring for the um, Elvish Reclaimer right now. I'm not really sure I like that as, a, as an approach though. The other option is to attack for two, which has its own problems as well, because our opponent is trying to lower their life total for Death Shadow. So if we play this out now, we're more likely to be good against days later on. All right, I've convinced myself to try a Green Sun Zenith here. And we need to get a Bayou, I believe. Let's see if they can spell this or not. Right, if they daze this and set themselves back, we've set ourselves ahead with mana. So we're right. If we find something like a Spell Pierce pointed at this, then we're going to feel a bit annoyed. A brainstorm. All right, they're looking for the days. I don't think this is Force of Willable, where it's just an X equals one. So we can go and get Allosaurus Shepherd and guarantee that our Grist gets to resolve. Okay. Problem with Allosaurus Shepherd though is it does die very easily to Bowmasters. We're, we already have targets for Bowmasters. Do we want to lean into that or not is the question. I think the ability to cast Uncountable Days, uh, an Uncountable Grist is just too strong. But our opponent is probably just going to untap, play a land and Bowmasters. Oh, they're not doing that. They're cycling their Lorien Revealed. That means no Bowmaster's turn, which means chance of us having a, an uncountable Grist are looking a bit more promising. And once Grist starts ticking up, uh, it's a real headache for a lot of decks. I'm always amazed when I see decks with just one Grist. Like, the card is so good. Yes, you can cheat for it, but just play more. The card's bananas. It's like the best thing to be doing in this sort of deck. All right. So, one, two... Three. So snuff out into Force of Will works here, but that's not what we have. All right, let's mill some cards. I think we'll play this Lair of the Hydra tap now while we can. We'll bash for three with our Shepherd. All right. So we have removal saved up in the Grist, so any creatures they get are less of a concern. A Dark Ritual. Oh, it's Doomsday. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. I think we're still right to... I don't think any of the plays we've done change necessarily. 
Maybe we... No, I still think the Shepherd is fine. They're getting Uncountable Grist. So, if our opponent can win this turn, then they will get us. And there's not really much we can do about that. Mm, is there another line that's better against this aggressive Doomsday start? Yeah, I don't know why I was thinking Death Shadow. You, you, you see one person playing Street Wraith and Death Shadow and your brain thinks about that all the time instead of the whole idea of it being a core component of Doomsday decks. But I don't think we are fast enough to beat what's going on right now. Mm. So how much damage can we do to our opponent next turn? One, two, three. So we can deal five damage to our opponent with what's on board. That's not good enough, is it? If we draw a land, we can do six, and that will be good enough. All right, let's have a look at our opponent's pile. They're already going. This looks like a pretty standard Turbo Doomsday build. Thassa's Oracle. Yep, and then they win the game. All right. I imagine this is going to be one of the trickier matchups for our deck. So, Thoughtseize has some text here. Pit Needle can sometimes do something, but I think it's a bit of a an error trying to bring this in. Mind Boat Trap can stop their fastest hands from killing us. Bowmasters is very good in this matchup. Would like to have that. Shepherd is fine. All of our beatdown stuff is fine. Stuff that accelerates us, like the Spirit Guy and the Mox, actually seem quite nice here. We want Natural Order so we can race. Grist is actually a little bit less good here because it's quite slow in terms of how quickly we can actually win the game. And if we're boarding all of these, we're probably boarding out some once upon a times. And we need to find a few more cuts. We need to keep our density of early stuff. So we probably trim one Grist. We still want one from a Green Sun Zenith option. Collect a Roof I don't like here. And Endurance is fine. It can sometimes shuffle things in and cause them a bit of a headache. What are we supposed to board out? Is it a Grist? Maybe it is a Grist. Or is it a Fiend Artisan? Maybe it's a Fiend Artisan, because they're not going to get that big, and we just need to put some damage going. Gadok T can do some stuff, but it's not really going to do that much against their deck, because they're casting low amount of value spells for general rule. All right, we'll try this. I am not expecting to win this matchup. Um, what do we have here? We have a Thoughtseize into some other stuff. And work our way towards a natural order. That seems acceptable. Because on the play we get to thought season before they can hide anything with a brainstorm. So I like this situation. Alright, let's go and get ourselves a bayou. Let's take a peek at what our opponent's working with. Before they have anything like Veil of Summer or Brainstorm to defend their hand with. Personal Tutor, Personal Tutor, Brainstorm, Force of Will, Ponder. Yikes. Um don't like what I'm seeing here. I think we take the force of will when we have to try and just get a big natural order soon enough to win the game. Not feeling happy about this matchup. We are playing a sort of fair, somewhat grindy deck. So we're going to see a ponder this turn. There it is. They want to find the mana before they put the personal tutor in the doomsday. And personal tutor can also be used to shuffle the ponder if they want one card from it or like a couple of cards. They can then Personal chew away the others and put the thing that they want, like the Doomsday on top. So, what are we doing here? We need to spam as many creatures into play as possible. Fiend Artisan. So, we can... We play out the Dryad Arbor and Green Sun Zenith, that's okay. Or we can... I think we play out the Quiron Ranger and the Dryad Arbor. And then we're looking to cast Natural Order soon. So we have one more setup turn and then we cast Natural Order, I think. Actually, can we... Let's try to work out if we can do this in another way. Uh-oh. Well, if our opponent's paying their life and not winning the game this turn, then we can try and put a lethal Cradle Hoof into play. Because we can play this Cradle out. We can tap it for two. Or... We can tap for two, and then the Arbor can untap. That's only three mana. All right, we'll do some maths when it gets to our turn. Like we can do a Crater Hoof for two. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage. That is enough, actually, right? If we play Cradle and just tap it for two, tap the Dried Arbor and the Bayou, sacrifice the Dried Arbor to Natural Order, we get to have a go putting Crater Hoof into play. And we'll have two creatures 
that both get plus two plus two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So exactly ten. So we'll overkill by one. All right, so if I print border anything spicy in. Uh, Orkish Bowmasters, to pick up our little guys, nothing else. They are passing the turn, so we have a chance to try and win the game now. Play this. One, two, three, four. So then we can return a forest to untapped type creature. So this way we can play around a daze as well. So we can untap this creature and return this forest. And then we can float an extra mana here, play around a daze, Sacrifice the Arbor. Go and get Kratuf Behemoth. This will pump our guys just enough for lethal. Alright. We got one of the games, but now we're on the draw. It certainly gets more difficult from here. I don't think we change anything here. We just got to do our thing. Our opening hand doesn't cast this Thought Seas. I don't think we can just rely on Endurance to get us there. Well, can we rely on double Endurance to get us there? Maybe. Maybe we can. Maybe this is a really ridiculous hand. Um, let me play out the Dried Arbor on one. Then we can start hard casting. Yeah, go on then. I've convinced myself. Like This gives us two shots to stop our opponent if they have a turn one kill. Because we can pitch the Dried Arbor to one Endurance and the Endurance to the other one. So if they don't go turn one, we can fill up their library in response to their Tassa's Oracle and we can still beat a piece of protection. Which is less likely to happen now they have five cards in hand. But it's something. Street Wraith. Sure. Scalding Tarn. Underground Sea. What are we going to see here? Thought Seas. A Cantrip. A Cantrip. Sure. So I would like to find another green card so I still have double Endurance up. But we will obviously play our Dryad Arbor because we play that and the Cradle. And we can start making some more manners. Natural Order. That's certainly one of the things I'm interested in. We can also do some weird stuff with our endurance so we can put it into play and then tap our cradle with it in play for an additional mana a lorian reveal so they're cycling away the cards the last card they have with that ponder a green sun zenith let's go and get what are we going to get here we could get an allosaurus shepherd to make sure that our natural order actually resolves or we could get an ignoble hierarch so that we have access to thought i think having access to thought is better but our opponent just pitched two cards our opponent did not show us another way of winning the game. I don't believe Orcish Bay Master is good enough to win the game, but they might have had a different cyborg plan for game three. All right, so here comes the Cabal Ritual. Here comes the Doomsday. All right, our opponent has resolved their Doomsday. Let us see what is missing from their pile and see if we can work out what's in it. Um, uh, one Tassel's Oracle, no Cavern of Souls. All right. So we have a thought sees we can't do anything with. Not ideal. Oh, accidentally played out a cradle that I didn't mean to play out. Whoopsie daisy indeed. So we attack with this. We're just trying to get there with our endurances, I think, here. Two mana, cycling the edge of autumn. Sure. And cycling another one. Cycling the street wraith. I think our endurances here are going to win the day for us. I've got two cards in hand. Um, so we'll let them put this trigger on the stack and then we will pitch cast this All right, we managed to get there just through the power of endurances uh, I did randomly play out that second guy's cradle that we didn't need to we did have another option here of not attacking with the dried arbor and Holding up a hard cast endurance in response to our first endurance But if our endurance is going to win us the game We're not going to need to hard cast it. Our opponent's just going to be dead and just die to decking So we managed to get a victory there. Let's go to round three and see if we can keep it rolling if you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description. Welcome to round three. We're on the play. We've got Mana Dork into Green Sun Zenith. This is like the sort of thing our deck's supposed to do, so I'll keep this. Then we'll lead out on Lair of the Hydra. I think I'd rather lose this than our Black Source. All right, we've got a little Goblin Shaman. All right, let's see what flavor of deck our opponent is. It? I'm guessing Delver, but it could be anything. It could be like Sneak and Show. All right, it's, it's Delver. I understood. 
Great Hoof Behemoth. Interesting. That is interesting. Right, let's play out this Ignoble Hierarch. Let's play out this Cradle. Let's have it for two. Play Zenith around a daze here. We'll get Allosaurus Shepherd. Then we'll go to attacks and bash for two. So in two turns, we can hard cast a Crate Hoof. We can also turn our Allosaurus Shepherd into a 5 5 and then attack for more. Sure, we're going to lose our Crate Hoof. But we can attack for seven with our Allosaurus Shepherd, which is not too shabby. Right, we're going to get one of our creatures lightning bolted now. Which one are they targeting? The Allosaurus Shepherd. We are not attacking for seven. Understood. So they're going to attack for one here, I think. No, they're holding back on blocks. Interesting. Quirion Ranger. So this is basically free to cast for the purposes of what our Cradle taps for. So let's play out this Ranger. This taps for four mana. That's for five. Let's make it as big as we can. We go to attacks and bash for six. We could have returned the Dried Arbor to make it one bigger, but I don't think that's necessary. And we can use that next turn to make it attack for one more if that's more important to us. There's a Ponder from our opponent. We must be getting towards Delirium pretty soon. So Sorcery, Instant, Land. So you haven't got a creature or an enchantment or an artifact, depending on which flavor. So they're, they're showing us Grixis, so they're going to have Orcish Bone Masters in there. But it's a case of probably Mistress Bauble. I don't think they might be running something like Seal of Fire and Seal of Removal. Those are quite popular these days. A Dark Ritual. Oh, are we playing Phoenix? I think we're playing uh, Grixis Phoenix, actually. It's a really cool deck. I should play it at some point on the channel. So they're going to put three Phoenixes, Phoenixes, Phoenixes into their graveyard and they're all going to jump out at the beginning of combat. Yep, buried alive. Deck is sweet. All right, so I didn't find any bonus ones. They're just going to have three of their guys, which is a lot and probably going to be good enough to beat us, I would imagine. Um, so what are we looking at to survive? Yep, so here's the arc like Phoenixes. Or phoenixes, however you prefer. And we kind of need to natural order. And we can't natural order into crate hoof. Right, three, six, nine, twelve. We can't block any of this. They only have one blocker though. Not that we're particularly great at removing blockers. Once upon a time. So if we attack with a big hydra, it could be lethal, our opponent will chump block it, and then we lose. Which means I think we're supposed to, once upon a time, what can once upon a time do us? It can block if we find a... Alright, let's just once upon a time to begin with. Um, what does Bowmasters do for us? Nothing really. What does the land do for us? Also nothing. What does Reclaimer do for us? Nothing. Uh, three, six. So they only need to attack three of them. Yep, our opponent's got us there. Sweet deck. Big fan. Okay, so. What would I like for this matchup? Um, my Great Trap is interesting. Because their whole deck is built around playing three spells. Very Live doesn't get snagged by the Galactic Teague. So I don't think we want that here. Thoughtseize. They are still just an aggro deck. So I don't really want to board in these Thoughtseize. Snuff Out has some interesting text that we could certainly leverage. Then we get rid of a Collector Roof here. That's the easy one. And uh, maybe we trim a Once Upon a Time. And then if we want to play any number of Snuff Outs, we can possibly play two of them by getting rid of some Once Upon a Times. That seems acceptable. We're probably going to have Merc Ties as well, right? Does that mean we want more Snuff Outs, or are we just going to try and manage them with... Endurances and Grists. Yeah, I think that. Okay, my break trap could be a stinker here, but hmm, what does this do? Turn one, Cradle. Turn two, sorry, turn one, Green Sun Zenith for Dried Arbor. Turn two, Grist. That's pretty reasonable. Keep this. I don't believe our opponent plays Wastelands in their list. Bayou. Let's ramp. Try it either. So our opponent doesn't have the most amount of like counter spell type stuff either. That's not really what they're about. That's more of like a cyborg plan for stuff. 
Right, are they going to bolt our dry lava? They are indeed. No turn to grist anymore. And insurance. That's going to be useful down the line. Let's play a land. We probably want to get a dried arbor at end step so that our cradle actually taps for mana. Okay, Dragon's Rage channel, sure. And they're going now. They might be going now. Wish I could pitch this cradle instead of our natural order, but that's not the world we're living in, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. Okay, this is just a brainstorm. Interesting. So they're using their petal for it so that they can use their Pluto Delta more efficient. Because they are kind of a combo deck right they're a combo deck that its combo is just making a lot of power and it has a serviceable aggro backup plan let's crack this get the dried arbor we got another lightning bolt but i think we have to get that so our cradle works yep there it goes goodbye mr dried arbor right, if we can just find some land we'll actually be okay here let's play a reclaimer let's play a cradle now so that if we draw a land drop next turn, we can actually deploy it. We have the biggest creature on board. We do have their Phoenixes covered. Feed the Swarm. All right, so they worried that we might bring in a Ley Line, but this ends up being a relatively decent removal spell for our little guy. Also switches off our Cradle, which is very much the burden that I'm having to live with right now. Land. Fiend Artisan that we can't cast. All right. Not feeling great about this one, but our opponent doesn't have... I guess they could play a Merc type now, that'd be real bad. A Ponder. Okay. I kind of don't want to burn our Endurance to stop a Merc type, but I also don't want to get beaten by the Merc type. So it's kind of a bit of a pain. Cast a Dark Ritual. Another Ponder, sure. A Thought Seas. They're going to take our Endurance... I think we just have to let them stand as that is. Because if we endurance away their graveyard, we might not get any value. They might just not have a Merc Tide or anything. And we'll, we'll basically lose three cards to the Thoughtseize just to shrink their guy by a little bit. Yep, there goes Endurance. I think our opponent is going to have us this, this match. Our hand has not really panned out from where we began. The risk of the double cradle hand has come back to bite us. Okay. We're back to casting spells again. They also know what we drew that turn. So they have perfect information still. We've got a 5-5 though, so our clock is now pretty sizable. And when we start jamming this Grist, all right, no, they could just play a, a Phoenix here. Yeah, that's what they're doing. So this is going to be 6, and it'll be 12 next turn. One card in our opponent's hand. So our plan here is to, uh, I don't really want to be snuffing out anything here. So we've got four mana. So the plan here is to attack with Fiend Artisan for five. And then second main, we're going to put an Attraxer into play. Tap this. Play this. Keep this one. The Attraxer. Okay, so we have some options here. Um, what do we want? Creature is probably going to be the Endurance. Okay, our opponent's just scooping up. So we're probably going to take the Endurance, obviously the Chrome Mox, and... The windswept teeth here. All right, we managed to wriggle our way through that one. Do I want to do anything differently? I don't think so. Our opponent's not big into counter magic by the looks of things. Our opponent's deck is so cool. Um, our opening hand doesn't do anything. Well, we can play Queer on Ranger, I guess, off of our spirit guide, but that's not how we drew that one up. Okay, we can play Mana Dorks, and then we can try and race to an Endurance at the right time. We can play a turn two Grist if we so wish. We'll keep this. We have to throw away one card here. Um, is it the Fiend Artisan or the Zenith? Maybe it's the Ranger, actually. Yeah, I think it's the Ranger. This can provide some more mana for us. But in terms of what we have going right now, in terms of our curve, I think it doesn't make enough sense. It doesn't make sense. So we're probably getting Thoughtsies on one. Nope. Just a DRC. Okay. No baubles or anything. Allosaurus Shepherd. We don't have time for this. We're going to go and get ourselves a Bayou and we're going to play our Ignoble Hierarch. And then we can try and Grist on two and then Endurance on three. But the Endurance won't be instant speed. Surgical Extraction. Are you kidding me? 
You really just decided to extracting our wind set teeth. That's that's some stuff right there, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> you got to laugh, haven't you? Like ninety nine percent of the time, that player is going to be a mistake, but this time it's uh, absolutely helped our opponent out in a big way. All right, uphill struggle engaged. Yeah, they're doing it just as a peak. So it is. it does make sense. It's just annoying that they managed to get our thing. All right. So we're going to get hit for probably 12 this turn. And then die on the following turn. We can kill one of their creatures. If they only bash us for 10. Then the next turn they bash us for 9. And then we die. Because it's probably going to turn on this channel or somewhere along the lines. If the channel doesn't get turned on, then we're okay. But this is sorcery, instant creature, artifact. So it's definitely going to be getting us. Here comes the boys. Yeah, now our opponent was perfectly right to do that search extraction. If they're just they're just using it as a peak to make sure they can get their combo off. And I think that's acceptable. It's funny that it jams us up a little bit, but I don't think we're going to beat turn two, getting attacked for twelve in the air. Our deck is too fair to beat that. Um, so we don't have any land. We have anything going on. GG opponents. Yeah, we got a little bit pummeled there. Maybe we are supposed to bring in Thoughtseize just to hit the Buried Alive. Maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing. And that makes more sense than the Snuff Outs. I just wasn't really... I'm not very familiar with the exact configuration of our opponent's deck. I wasn't sure how into the fair, like, merc type plan they might be going doesn't look like they are at all so maybe we did sideboard incorrectly and this is a learning experience and you probably do want the thought seizers all right let's go to round four we are two and one all right what does our hand do here we play out a turn one dried arbor into bow masters or fiend artisan that seems acceptable not a big fan of just playing out a naked dried arbor but uh it's one of the things our deck sometimes has to do scrubland okay they're plowing our arbor, sure. Um, we could try and jam a Fiend Artisan right now, or we could try and jam a Bowmasters. I think a Bowmasters using our Spirit Guide is quite nice, and then we can actually tap our Cradle for mana next turn. A lot of mana, because Bowmasters gives us two creatures. I think that'll be a nice surprise for our opponent. Play an X1 creature, please. Sylvan Library. Well, August Bowmasters is pretty good against Sylvan Library. We're on some sort of like, um, like junk Nick for E type strategy. I mean, junk is in the color combination of white, blue, green. No disparaging comments to our opponent's deck at all. Before we had actual names for the shards for those color combinations, we used to call them things like junk. All right, before it was Abzan. Anyway, I digress. Now we have a lot more mana. Let's play this. I would like the Grist the Hunger Tide. This will start churning out tokens and make our cradle extremely good. I, obviously, it's already good, but it's going to get better. So, bash for two. Next turn, we have five mana off of just two lands. It's pretty, pretty spicy. Do you want to go into the Sylvan Library well? They do not. You have a Maya. So, I think we're on Abzan Depths. All right, Mox Diamond. Quite a lot of mana they're putting into a spell. Is this going to be a Green Suns for Night? It is going to be a Green Suns for Night. Drawing this Crater Hoof is weirdly kind of annoying. We will be killing our opponent's Knight with our Grist. As is tradition. Oh, it's a Sylvan Safekeeper. Interesting. Interesting. Another Cradle is great here. Uh, we just get to win the game, right? So we make a token. Tap this for four. Play this. Keep this one. Patch a four. Play the big boy. Make all our guys enormous and beat. Excellent. Abs and depths, you say. Pithy Needle is probably going to have some text here. Uh, Force of Vigor can have some text as well, but not always the most exciting. Snuff Out is going to be great for some of their guys. I think I like the Snuff Outs more than the Force. Uh, Collector Roof, goodbye to you. Get rid of once upon a time. We're bringing a bunch of stuff that doesn't get found by once upon a time. 
They're not countering our spells, so all the natural order stuff is pretty good. Orcish Bowmasters looks pretty medium here, to be honest. So I think that goes. Anasaurus Shepherd is not great either, though. So maybe we get access to one Force of Vigor. The reason I'm into Force of Vigor a little bit is Sylvan Library and Urza Saga. So I don't mind having one Force of Vigor there. We can always pitch it to our Chrome Mox in a pinch. Uh, Galactic Teague isn't going to stop anything in this matchup. We could just have one Once Upon a Time instead. Like a Dig Spell. Alright, we'll go for that. It, it, the Once Upon a Time is basically just another land a lot of the time, but sometimes it gets to be other things. So we can shut off a Wasteland on turn one, or we can play an Ignoble Hierarch around Wasteland. That does cut us off black, but we're not really into black in this matchup anyway, so... Actually, that's not true. We need to snuff out mana at some point, don't we? We'll keep. We'll find another black source at some point, surely. Alright. Opponent starting with a Windset Heath. A Bayou. A Green Sun for Dryad Arbor. Over to us. Alright, so now we can save our Windswept Heath to get a Bayou later. So we'll play out our Ignoble Hierarch. I think we want to try and race towards Grist a little bit. Flagstones, yep. Yeah. Elvish Reclaimer, sure. So we can Pithy Needle the Reclaimer here. Orcish Bowmasters. That makes me sad, I won't lie. Their Bowmasters are a lot better than ours because they don't really have X1s apart from the Arbor and enemy Bowmasters. But we don't care about Bowmasters for our dr card drawing. So, um, I think it's more important to put a Pit and Needle into play than it is there anything else here. Elvish Reclaimer. So let's stop that from activating. We don't get to do any spells apart from that though. I think that's better than just getting the Fiend out of because otherwise they sap the flagstones, they gain more mana, they just get to go so far ahead. There's the Wasteland. Sure. Knight of the Reliquary. Uh, our opponent is so far ahead right now. I don't know how we're going to win this game. I guess the Endurance can eat up some, some stuff here. Alright, so we crack this. Because of the Wasteland... I still think we want the Bayou, and we're going to use Bait the Wasteland into the Cradle, I think. Uh, so we're going to jam this guy. Then we'll play the Cradle. Then we'll play our Reclaimer, and we're expecting the Cradle to eat the Wasteland, so we'll still have Black Mana for Snuff Out Potential. And then we're hoping to be casting some Endurances and ambushing our opponent's creatures in combat. That's how we're going to try and win this one. Swords to Plowshares. That's pretty bad for us. This is not going well. Yep, so we baited that to keep our thing alive. Also, we just wanted more creatures in play. So they're going to sacrifice a land. Get another wasteland. Alright, I think if they wasteland us, then I will scoop. We should be doing it before we untap, really. Yep, I don't think we're coming back from here. We're so far behind. I'm happy with how we boarded, though. So, Galaxy can stop opposing Green Sun Zeniths, but I don't think it's worth shutting off our own Green Sun Zenith to do that. I think we just go back in here. I like the tools we have available to us. Um, hmm. Bayou, play the Hierarch, and keep going. This means we can snuff out their Reclaimer on turn one. If that's what they play. If they just wasteland us, we still end up with a Hierarch. So we still have mana. Cracking the Vernic Catacombs. Getting the Bayou. Playing our little Goblin Friend. And pass. Mox Diamond. There's a Reclaimer. There's another Reclaimer. That's a little bit awkward. Two Reclaimers makes snuffing out a lot worse. We don't need to snuff out now anyway. You can do it whenever... What is we going to have here? So, I think the play here is Green Sun Zenith for another creature. Play Dryad Arbor. We could get a two drop here, or we could just get more mana dorks and just try and put a big natural order on the stack. I want natural order, I think. Uh, so let's get, it should probably be another Ignoble Hierarch, really. Okay, let's Dryad Arbor. I don't think there's any point in 
hitting a reclaimer, we'll save it for like a knight instead. If they have two of them, it's not really going to do very much for us. The flagstones. Another one. Wowzers trousers. I think it's time for us to start doing some maths, isn't it? Um, let's play this out. So one, two, three, four mana. And sacrifice this. We get Crater Hoof with three attackers, but four creatures. So four, eight, twelve damage. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen damage. Is that good enough? Or do we want to Green Sun Zenith this turn for lethal next turn in a bigger way? What am I worried about this flagstones finding? Hmm. Like we just get a big like they could just plow here as well and jam us up a bunch. What is the play here? I think it's getting endurance. So one, two, three, four. Because this will shrink all these so that we're not going to get jammed up by them. Let's make this bigger so I don't click on the wrong one. I think that is better than a grist. Is it better than a grist? If we get a grist and we act and we plus one the grist, they're just going to mob it and kill it anyway. Yeah, I think it's endurance here. Let's say no to their graveyard there. And then next turn we can do our big crate hoof play. Yep, you sack your flagstones, you get, I don't know, a cradle or something spooky that's going to ruin our day. There's a savannah off the flagstones. What is the land of choice for them? A thespian stage. Well, that's terrifying, isn't it? Now, can we beat around Dark Depths? Maybe we can. If we draw a cradle, we definitely can. But it's going to get a little bit tricky here. If they have a land, then they can obviously use their reclaimer to shuffle away a land... Or, uh, sorry, th throw away a land, get the Dark Depths, and then have the mana available to make it there and then. Otherwise, you do one, two, three, four mana. So we have... Suck one of these. All right. That waste sounds kind of annoying. But let's see if they use it. I don't think they will. I think they'll hold up for the 2020. Okay, so... If we tap this for green, and this for green, and this for green, and this, and then we sacrifice this, I think we're okay here. We did not draw a crate heave that turn. We drew the other target. So. We have five creatures in play. So 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 damage coming in plus another 5. That's 25, 6, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's 30 damage. And we also get to kill one of their guys. They can make a Marit Lage and block this. And they take 8 plus 6 plus 9. Uh, which is 20, right? 8 plus 12 is 20, yeah. So maybe this isn't enough. We see how they block, and then maybe the snuff out is the difference. And I think you have to put one of your guys in front as well. If they put two blockers, then we lose. 12, 13, 14. Yeah, this is not enough, is it? Kill one of these. They correctly blocked around snuff out here. And we lose. And they go to three and they kill us with this. Yeah. I'm trying to think. The turn before, if we'd have attacked, if we'd have done it the turn before, I'm trying to remember what our board state was. Uh, I was calculating with the with the Noble Hyrax attacking, but we had one Dried Arbor that attacks. But I don't think that one point of damage is enough to make the difference on the last turn. Yeah, we just got a little bit unfortunate there. But... Close, a close one. All right, let's go to round five. We're now looking for the we're, we're two and two, I think. So we're looking for the even record for the positive record. Uh, we've got a one lander again. I like the hierarchy. We're on the draw. I think I will keep this. We've got two draw steps to find a land, but even if we don't, it's not the worst. Our opponent's mulling quite aggressively, so I'm quite glad to have a hand with endurances in, which is kind of one of the reasons I was more happy to keep this than other times because at least endurance can stop some turn one combat from killing us no play from our opponent interesting all right let's do a bayou into a hierarch we now have the second land so our hand is totally fine and good 
City of Traitors. Interesting. So what is our plan with this hand? I think we want to get a forest here to play around Blood Moon. Just in case that's the sort of flavor our opponent's on right now. I think we go for a Fiend Artisan here. And probably a, another Hierarch. Force of Will pitching Flusterstorm. Okay, so our opponent is on some sort of show-and-tell deck by the looks of it. So these Endurances not actually going to do anything. Understood. We need to find a win condition. Uh, we can beat down with Endurances, but our opponent should probably draw out before that's good enough to kill them. Alright, so we can deploy this. Then we can attack with one Hierarch for two damage. And then we can flash in an Endurance at end step. It's only less worry about Blood Moon now. Let's get another Bayou. We don't have to worry about days, it's just hard counters. So they always get whatever. Uh, we won't bother shuffling that thing in. A Dryad Arbor, you say. I'll attack with this Endurance for five. I'll put an Allosaurus Shepherd into play. Then we can get Cradle at end step. And then have enough mana to kill our opponent next turn. Alright, our opponent knows what's, what's up there. Their hand just did not come together. But they showed us enough that I'm pretty sure they're playing show and tell. Which means we want Thought Seizes, Pithing Needle, Galop T, potentially these Force of Figures. Uh, the reasons for these things. Thought Seize, they're a combo deck. We want to take their pieces. Pithing Needle stops Sneak Attack. Galop T stops Sneak Attack. And also stops some of the like weird Omniscience lines too. Uh, this is not a Collector Reef matchup. Bowmasters is good. The Allosaurus Shepherd is good. I think we need to have Natural Order so that we actually have a chance at racing our opponent and doing some stuff. The Endurances aren't really going to be doing anything in this matchup. So those can go. And I don't know if we can cut realistically cut anything more. So at present, we're looking at like this. I'm not even sure I like the Teague that much. Maybe we would rather have the the Needle. And then I think I think we can probably trim Once Upon a Time for a Needle. And then it's a case of would I rather have Once Upon a Time or would I rather have Force of Vigor? I think Once Upon a Time being land is kind of good. I think we've been skirting uh, things a little bit. Where maybe we should have, been, should have been having some more just access to mana in our hands. Um, we have a Thought Seize. We have a Natural Order, which is kind of the plan I want, so I guess we're going to keep this. We're hoping they play like a Ponder or something on turn one. We're hoping they don't play... Okay, so the problem with this is they can Brainstorm to defend against our Thought Seize. Which is a real pain. Um, but I think we still have to fire it off because our opponent could have Chantel next turn. So on our next turn, we can play Hierarch and Reclaimer. And then the turn after we can natural order for like an Atraxa or something. Yep, so here's the Brainstorm defending against the Thought Seize. Like we're still going to get to see some stuff and take a card. But the best thing is going to be hidden. So let's see. Show and tell, Lotus Pearl, Sneak Attack, Sneak Attack. Yikes. So they probably have a monster on top of their library. This gives us a chance to draw a Pithing Needle as an out next turn. We don't have anything like a Caracas in our deck. Volcanic Island. There's a Lotus Petal. You see a sneak attack? Oh, Magus of the Moon. Okay, we actually have the green source. So it's not actually the end of the world. And we got another green source here. Let's play this Hierarch. Am I supposed to play the Reclaimer there? I don't think so. Okay, so we know they've got two sneak attacks in hand. Yep, here come the Magus Beats. That's fine. Now, our Crater was shut down, but... We can certainly win without worrying about Cradle. So I think we play out the Reclaimer and the Fiend Artisan here. I wouldn't mind something like a Ravenous Chupacabra in this deck as weird as that is. Just like a thing you can shoot with Fiend Artisan that does kill something right there and then. Like Grist can do, but not always. Yep, so there's one of the sneak attacks. A mana source. So our opponent's on 19. We sacrifice this and then we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen we can put our opponent to two 
And then if they sneak attack something in, we don't immediately die. Is That's not true, actually, because the Magus can probably do some immediate killings. Um, we could always go and get a Traxa. I don't hate that as a strategy. The opponent's got two carbon hands, so we know they're not force of willing us. All right. Let's natural order away our... The Reclaim is probably worse, right? In the hierarchy here. Sure. We're going to go get a Traxxer and try and dig for a Pithing Needle. Did not find the Pithing Needle. Uh, there's our artifact. We'll leave this Crate Hoof Behemoth in our deck. Um, a Sorcery. I will take this. Thought Seize. A Land. I think we'll just have a Bio. It doesn't really matter. And we get a Creature here as well. We have one Green Mana available. We also have one Black Mana potentially. Uh, we take the Planeswalker, obviously. And I think we take the Fiend Artisan here. Okay, so then we we want to Thought Seize our opponent. Actually, that's not true. We don't really want to Thought Seize our opponent. It doesn't matter. We want to be able to Bowmaster this turn, though. So I think we play this, put this Fiend Artisan underneath. And this gives us Bowmasters, which gives us more permanence to sacrifice, is the thing. Uh... I don't want to give our opponent more blue mana here. They don't have any blue mana. So we, we turn cantrips off. And then next turn we can create a hoof and win the game. Which one is this? Emrakul cool the Eon's Torn. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's make some more creatures. Uh, I think we ping our opponent for one here. Our opponent can go to attacks. So we have to lose six permanents here. We have a land... So we need one, two, so one, two, three, four. So we can sacrifice land, land, this, this, and this. And we have to sacrifice one more, do we? Okay. And this will put us to one. And this will shuffle in. So then we play out this bayou. Sacrifice this green creature. And get a Beamost. We'll pump our guys. We attack with this. We'll unlock their cantrips. I think we're not supposed to attack with our Crater Hoof. I think we're just supposed to attack with this. Alright, we, we got there. I think not giving our opponent blue mana was really essential to winning that one. I don't know what the two cards, the two mystery cards in their hand were, but if they're ponders or brainstorm, we saved ourselves by not attacking with the Crater Hoof there. So we finished with a 3-2. Not bad for my first go on the deck. We did kind of get crushed by the uh, the combo town. They definitely uh, comboed us good. But we did beat um, one combo deck in the Doomsday matchups. So that's interesting. And I guess Show and Tell is a combo deck too. So yeah, we beat combo more than I thought we would. All right, let's talk about the deck. So this is a deck that just looks like a pile of cards, basically. It just looks like a bunch of little reasonable but not exciting little green men however the combination of them is quite potent like you have all these abilities to toolbox and just grind through games nicely and find the right piece at the right time it's got a lot of play to it and you do just have the big oops i win button in natural order which i think this deck definitely needs some matchups like combo matchups where you just need to put the big scary thing into play the natural order is going to be the thing to do that for you and I think it's essential to have that sort of strategy and sometimes you just go, oops, got you. There's obviously a lot of tweaking you can do. Like there are lists that play like an opposition agent as, an, as a thing to shoot it for. I've seen builds that run more Bowmasters than this as well. I think I probably wouldn't mind having a Bowmasters over once upon a time. I think Bowmasters is very good right now. And the fact that it gives you two bodies for Gaia's Cradle is really nice. I've also seen builds that only run three cradles and then try and rely on tutoring them more when they need them. But it just feels like such a broken card that I understand why you would want four. I think four is probably more stock than three. Our sideboard was was fine. We never really get any of the matchups where we wanted the Gadok Teague in a big way, which is a shame. But obviously the Pith Needles were good and the Snuff Outs and the Thoughts, these are the main cards you're boarding in. That's why they're the four ofs. You know, you got a creature matchup kill some creatures you got a combo match up take some cards like pretty pretty simple i think 
there's definitely a lot of room for getting extra marginal percentages playing this deck if you're experienced with it because you sort of learn a few more of the lines like i imagine what we played today wasn't necessarily the cleanest you'd ever see anyone playing this deck but like i said it's my first time playing it and i think we did pretty well for ourselves and i'm not unhappy with how we finished today we did get to lose that really sweet phoenix deck which i will definitely try and play at some point but approaching fast is death December. So it's going to be all the 2020 action all the time, apart from maybe midweek meta deck slots. So expect to wait a while for the Phoenix deck if I don't get it done before December. All right, uh, not really much more to say about this. I'm not really well enough equipped to talk about this one. But if you've got some cradles in paper, then by all means, give a go on this one. But this one's very cheap online if you want to play this as well. I think it was under 300 ticks for this deck. Like considerably, I think it was like 240 or something like that. It was quite a cheap deck to to put together. I think the only expensive card really is the the Orcish Bowmaster in terms of online prices. So definitely jump into Magic Online and why not try out Card Hoarder? It's my sponsor, but they're actually a really good service. I'm not just saying that because they sponsor me. I I've been quite impressed with the service I've been getting from them. So check that out if you want to try and build this deck online. And yeah, this sort of shows you the the depth of Legacy, right? You can play your ridiculously busted turn one combo decks, but then you can also play like grindy green critters like this. And, you know, like I said, this not only did it top eight the European Eternal Weekend, I think it also put one copy into the, the rest of the top 16 and then a few more into the top 32. I think, I think it ended up with four in the top 32. I could be wrong on that one. Um, but there was definitely at least two in the top 16. So, you know, it's a solid deck to play for sure. Even though it's not exactly my sort of magic. Um, I do like that it's got a big fancy eye win button, which is which is kind of my sort of magic. But I'm not big into playing little, little critters that much. But sometimes, you know, you just get the mode to play a bunch of mana dorks. And this is... Probably the best mana dork deck that you can play right now. Regular elves is having a bit of a rough time at the moment. And this is kind of what people have transitioned to that had their cradles. And you can certainly see why. It's got a lot of power. It can play different sorts of games, which I think is a real credit to it. You can play the grindy games. You can play the powering out your natural orders. And you can pivot between them, which is really nice. And like I said, the customizability on what some of your silver bullets are is really fancy too. All right, I think we are done for today. I hope you enjoyed this one, me playing something that I've not played before. So it doesn't always happen that much on the channel. I've, been, I've uh, been playing a lot of decks for a while now, but every so often we'll play something new. And it's weird that I haven't played this before, to be honest. I was more of like a traditional Wales player than this. I like the sort of combo -y side, but this deck is, you know, pretty good. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would as well. All right, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, it helps the channel out, and goodbye.